Hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to uh, put something online because I feel that there is a need for that to be done. I could be wrong, but um, it's something that is especially bothering me because this is just a drop in the ocean. There are possibly, if you start digging, more and more things that you can find, not just with the financial ombudsman, but with many other things. So... Um, when we're told that some other countries are corrupt, it makes me question whether it's a biblical thing of pointing a splinter in your brother's eye while you have a massive big beam. But here we are. The Financial Ombudsman Service is set up by the government. And this is their site to show uh, individual financial businesses the complaints. And here it says that it covers the period from uh, six, for six months from the 1st of July to the 31st of December. And what I want to show you here is that if you scroll down, uh, you will have a table. And that table has got two uh, tabs. One is the new cases, one is the resolved. And there's a big question mark in my mind for these resolved cases. But we'll talk about the new cases at the moment. So on this side, you will have the business name, then the business group with the total number of new cases. And then the last section is the cases divided by um, a different kind of category. So as I scroll down, these three are the ones that I'm going to focus on at the moment. So you've got the business name, business group and the claims. The one thing that's really astonishing is as you scroll down, you will start seeing the amount of claims made by different business names and different business group groups and this is just mind-blowing there you go bank of scotland 22089 and following very closely as if it's a race for the best uh, 17781 by barclays bank and then you go further down and they are all cases of complaints and more complaints some more you get to another one which is hsbc which is a high number um so that one is high and then you've moved further down um have we passed no there we go hsbc 10997 then we move further down and another biggie that's coming up is lloyd's 21304 and these numbers, I mean, I'm just going to scroll quickly just to see how dizzying all this is. So this is for a period of only six months. And that is the shocking thing. So now that we've seen all that, um, I want to show you that I have been crunching some numbers and writing them down, doing some calculations. But before we go on to this, there's another tab that I would like to click on and it's called the funding fact sheet and this is i uh, don't know where it's gone hello there we go so this is going to tell us um, that the ombudsman oh just for you to see just for you to have a quick look here we go, that's their fact sheet. It's a quick guide too. And if you have a look here, it says that the first 25 cases in a year are free, which is baffling how generous that is. But then again, we're dealing with banks, so I don't know whether that really matters. Uh, they charge 550 um, after the 26th case. Uh, from April 2012 to April 2014, on all of their cases, they charged 550, not all of them, sorry, PPI cases, they charged 550 and added another further £350. And for from 2013, they introduced a group account fee for the largest banking groups. But irrespective of that, the mass amount of number of claims, as you can see in my number crunching moment, the mass amount of claims is just stag staggering. So here we go from the one thing that really struck me that all these numbers on these pages are people. 
which is quite astonishing. So the period from the 1st of the 7th to the 31st of December 2015, six months altogether, uh, the claims made are were 154 and bear in mind this is just banking this is just banking they have got many other branches so just for banking 154,224 over the period of six months times that by 550 per claim we're going to forget about the discount that is given to the largest banking groups so each of these claims potentially has brought in 84 million eight hundred twenty three thousand two hundred to the ombudsman now let's presuppose it's over a period of uh, one year so we times that with 308 448 uh sorry times it by two then subsequently 550 and then you get 169 million six hundred and forty six thousand four hundred I did do a little presuppose calculation down here, but what I want to show you is that I actually found the figures. So the PPI claims, as it says here, from 2014 to 2000, uh, 2012 to 2014, PPI claims altogether there were 936, 354 times that by 550 plus 350, that equals. 842,718,600. Now, these at the top are the total of the claims for each year, supposedly, just banking. So we've got 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Add them up together. That's the amount that came up. Times that with 550 per case. There you are. There's the, the figure that came out. Now, bear in mind that it's not just the banking because you have motor insurance. And for instance, between the period of 2012 to 2016, these are the figures. They come up to 38,184 times 550. We're talking about 21 million. Then I've listed a few. You've got travel insurance, building and contents, mobile phones, health and medical, and, 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 and the list goes on. And when you put it in that perspective, it is painful. Now, they have stated in their, on their site that they have had, in 2015, the complaints top 50 million. So 52 million complaints about products and services were made last year. So if all of these complaints each cost £550, depend. Um, regardless of whether it's banking or insurance or anything that comes up to let's say 50 50 million times 550 it comes to a massive big whopper so I forgot the zeros here so this is absolutely mind-blowing please add a zero there and a zero there I think I was completely baffled by the whole thing. Now, when um, if you wanted to look, I went into the annual review and it gives you an annual review. So all of these numbers that I mentioned previously, I added them all up together. And those are just the PPI claims. Now, when we... Um, there is something really important that I want to add with this because the question mark is... What are the resolved cases? And they boast that they have resolved cases, 31%, 19 so on and so forth. My experience tells me that these are all questionable, and I'll explain why. This is a warning to everyone, and I will try and be as quick as possible to squeeze it into the 15 minutes. When I had a dispute with Halifax uh, via the Ombudsman, Halifax delayed quite a lot with their responses and so on. So... The ombudsman sent me a letter because Halifax was willing to pay. So here we go. Due to the delay in providing the case file for this complaint, Halifax has offered £300 for the distress and inconvenience. And I thought, well, OK, well, they are recognising that they have made a mistake. £300, I mustn't grumble. So um, I wanted to accept it. So I get a form that says at the top, settlement form. 
And if you see further down, it will say, I confirm my acceptance of the offer made by Bank of Scotland outlined in your letter dated 2015 in full and final settlement of my complaint. So I thought, hold on a second, full and final settlement of my complaint means that they will close the account, they will close the claim because it's full and final settlement of the claim or the complaint. So therefore, it has nothing to do with distress and inconvenience. So I wrote to them on numerous occasions asking them to tell the bank, Halifax, to rephrase that statement. So here's one of the examples where I told them about the settlement form. This form states, I confirm my acceptance in full and final settlement. I said, is this a mistake or attempt to deceive? For clarity's sake, Halifax's offer is made for causing distress. So since when did distress, inconvenience and prevention equal final settlement of a complaint? And I asked that on several occasions, but nothing, no answer came. They were completely silent. The ombudsman was stumm. So I phoned the FCA, which is Financial um, Services, and they told me to ring a gentleman uh, at Halifax who was a very nice man, probably the only one at Halifax, but that's by the by. And who wrote to me to say, you have requested that Halifax change the wording from in full and final settlement to reflect that the offer was for a payment of 300 to apologise for the distress and inconvenience for our delay in forwarding your file. The settlement form which was sent by you by FOS is its own document. So that document belonged to the financial ombudsman. Now it makes a little bit, it makes things a little bit clearer, but yet not. Why are they deceiving? Because why couldn't they change the form if it's their own form? It's just, it just takes to go on the computer and tap in a different wording. So under the Freedom of Information Act, number 1814, 31st December 2015, they responded to me and said, the settlement form sent to you by the adjudicator is a standard settlement form. All offers to con uh, consumers require an acceptance or rejection using this settlement form. There is not a different version of the settlement form. So that means that anyone who has been offered a distress and inconvenience have signed this form. They have actually signed that they have ended their complaint, regardless of what the outcome was. Absolutely shocking. And wittingly, they have given that up. So the next thing that I have found out was that they say in the last five years there have been 891,079 offers made to the consumer. Now bear in mind that that number is more than double. So how many of these claims have they settled? And they said they settled 64 on distress and inconvenience. Now, what's really interesting, the next one that they sent in February is very different because they are stating in the February one, it does not, um, it does not oblige the authority to create new information in the form of an opinion or commentary. So now this is an opinion. Distress and inconvenience is an opinion. It's not a fact. In light of this, we do not hold any recorded information in relation to this part of your request, which is the distress and inconvenience. So they don't have any information, recorded information, in relation to this part of your request. Well, the one in December did have recorded information by the looks of it. So who's fooling who here? is the question mark. And on a final note, in this particular one, they are saying that they have re received uh, this number of complaints in 2014 and this number in complaints in 2015, uh, but they have resolved more than that and more than that, which means that they bungled everything up that they have resolved and put them in 2014 and 2015. That's what it seems. So on that note, I think I'm squeezing the 15 minutes now. And um, I hope this helps. I hope, please, 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 this is a warning to really look at their documents. Thank you. Bye-bye.